1995 was a great year for me because uh, it was a year I decided to you know, stop being so shy, come out of my shell, try new things. Uh, for instance, I uh, decided to sign up for a tap dancing class. Uh, because, you know, inspired by Donald O'Connor and Singing in the Rain. And so, you know, I wasn't exactly Fred Astaire on the dance floor. I was more like those hippos in Fantasia. But, you know, I, oh. <laughs> but I was having a good time. Uh, well, second, I was, I was in grad school and, and I'd never been to Europe. And over the summer, there was a student trip to France. So I decided to sign up. I'm going to go, right, with about 20 other students. And that would be great, you know. So uh, we all went and the the art department, which was my department, uh, had arranged for us to stay in a dormitory in the Latin Quarter, right next to Luxembourg Gardens. So it's beautiful, old building you know, by American standards, uh, you know, with wooden floors. So fantastic, and even better, it was a girls' dorm. But uh, <laughs> but because it was summer and a few of the rooms were empty, they let me and my roommate Kevin, the only two guys on the trip, stay in the dorm. Now, Kevin, I had met on the flight over there for the first time. I didn't know him. He was also a student, but he was graduating. And that was his present to himself, and I was just coming into the graduate school. And we were sort of opposites. Kevin was uh, like, looked like a heavy metal guy. He looked like a guy from Poison or Rat, one of those hair metal bands. He had big poofy hair, uh, always wore a leather jacket. The, uh, you know, he had sunglasses on all the time. Remember, it's 1995. This was cool. And me, I look like me, you know. So, uh, but we got along great. He was a sweet guy. Uh, because I was a tourist, I got up early every morning. I wanted to enjoy Paris as much as possible. So I would watch the sunrise over the city, see people get up, go through the garden, do some watercolors, grab a crepe. And then I would come back about 10. And Kevin, who liked to sleep in, would just be getting up. And that first week, I would find him all dressed up in his you know contour leather jacket sitting on the bed reading and i'd say hey kevin you know you want to go uh to the musee picasso the louvre or something go check out an exhibition and he said no i think i'm gonna hang here i say okay so i started to shut the door and he said no don't shut the door that's part of my plan and i said your plan what's your plan well he explained to me that he had not come to paris just for the art and culture he wanted a paris romance and his plan was that he was going to sit in the room with the door open and a French student, because there were still some there over the summer studying, would walk by and go, oh, quelle surprise, an exotic American. And ooh la la, he reads a book. And would walk in and Kevin would show them, the, he had a book of poetry and she oh, quel deep, right? And uh, they would talk and have a romance. Now, I pointed out, Kevin, there are, there are actually living and breathing women outside the dorm in the museums. Like, they're everywhere in France. There's French women everywhere. Uh, and uh, he said, yeah, but see, out there, I'm a tourist, right? But here, they know I'm a student, an artist, right? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not some idiot who's come over here to visit France. Now, me, being an idiot who came over to visit France, I went out, you know, to the museums and left him. Good luck. That wasn't good for me. Really, because I also had a plan, and I needed to get Kevin out of the room. Uh, I also had a dumb plan, because you see, I had been really into this tap dancing for the first few months, so I brought my tap shoes. <laughs> but I was too shy to ask for a place to practice. We had a big dorm room, so I thought, well, I'll practice in there, I just gotta get Kevin out. But I don't wanna tell him that I'm gonna tap dance in the room. <laughs> so I need to get him out. So a couple of days later, I told the women in our group, and I said, hey, could you take Kevin, I invite him to the museum. And Kevin said, yeah, sure. So he went in the afternoon, perfect. So I got in the room, got my mixtape out, put it in, and I start to practice like kind of softly, right? And I'm doing like shuffle ball change, you know, with a real simple step. And I got Van Morrison taking me into the mystic and I'm going along with the beat. And then it turns into the blues and I'm tapping a little, a little harder, right? Making a little more noise with the taps. And then yep, James Brown hits, right? And you know, I'm feeling like a sex machine. So, you know, I'm, I'm doing, what are called cramp rolls. You tap the, the taps on the front of your shoes and then the, on the back, and they sound kind of like horses' woofs. And I was going really fast when a knock came at the door, and I thought, oh, God, Kevin's back. So I slip my shoes. I turn the music off, slip my shoes into the bag. I go to the door, and there's this annoyed-looking, pretty French student. And she's going, she's saying something that I heard as, blip, 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 silence. And I said, 
what, Kay? And she said, uh, you are making noise. Stop the noise. And I, I wasn't going to admit that I was dancing in the room, so I, I pretended to be innocent. And I said, I don't hear any noise. And she said, you were making noise like an animal. You were making animal noises, right? <laughs> and, and I said, I don't hear any animal noises, but I'll stop doing the noise that we don't hear, OK? Right? And I shut the door, figured that was it. Right? Wasn't going to be able to practice. So I left. Right? I come back about an hour later, and Kevin is throwing a fit, and all of the people in our group are looking at him. Well, what had happened is I had left. A few minutes later, Kevin came back. The woman had reported us. The, le the person who ran the dorm called him up on the phone. He walks in the door. He answers the phone. Hello? And she goes, you have to stop making noise, or you will have to leave. And he's like... I wasn't making any noise. And she said, yes, well, you, you were making noise. We, we were reported. He said, I just walked in here. I didn't make any noise. And uh, she goes, you are yelling. You are obviously the noisy one, right? <laughs> and everybody's around here going, oh, good, an international incident. This will be great, right? I can tell mom about it. So, you know, they're all looking at him. And I walk in, and I see Kevin's situation, right? And I like, calm down. He says, they, they called me up, and I just walked in. I wasn't any, making any noise. I'm calling tomorrow, because this isn't fair. I'm going to call and say, the people next door are breathing. Breathing. They're keeping me awake. Tick them out, right? So I said, Kevin, calm down. And I, I was going to tell him I was dancing in the room. So I said, look, I, it's my fault. I was playing music too loud. We'll go explain. So we had to go explain the next day. We had to apologize to the woman next door, right? And it turned out that she and Kevin made a connection because they both agreed I was noisy because apparently I snore, right? <laughs> so they started talking. Kevin started telling her about poetry. He was going to go out on a date. Uh, and, you know, it wasn't exactly a Paris romance because she told him, uh, I do not want to hear about the philosophy. I only like the sex, right? <laughs> Did they have the sex? Well, all I can tell you about that is through the wall, I heard animal noises, <laughs> but I didn't dare report them. Thank you.